you've ever met. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Actually, uh, I'm glad you're here, Kathy. I have a question for you. Can Can I ask you a question? Yeah, go for it. Oh, my God. That's <laughs> so close. So yeah, go for it. Yeah, this is how Do I look you- in class. I look like an 80-year-old old man because I'm just sitting there like this the whole time. Like, <laughs> That's funny. But, okay, yeah. so, so my question is, do you work at Ransom District Library? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I'm really good friends with Erin Marsh, the assistant director. <laughs> yeah, and I love Erin. I saw you in her friends list. Sometime in the future, you need to ask her about Dakota and Zach, and you'll hear some interesting stories. Oh, God. Yeah. I just, I, I was looking, I was on her Facebook page, and I saw you were friends with her, so I was curious. So I've been working there for uh, over a year in August. Okay. It, w- it would have been a year in August. The place is great. You should see the new building. It's gorgeous. Oh, I've, I've been outside of it. I've been waiting to go back. By the way, I was waiting on a job offer from them. Aaron's, Aaron's doing me dirty. That was the whole Ooh. running joke for... No, it's a joke. The whole oh. running joke is like I wanted... I was going to take... A, is Tom Houseman still there? Yep, Tom's still there. Love yeah. Tom. So yeah, the joke was I was going to take his job and that never happens. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny contextually. I probably can't talk about it, but that's really funny <laughs> with some other context. But he's, uh, yeah. So yeah, yeah. If you, if you ever want to hear some really dumb, funny stories, you ask, ask Aaron about Dakota and Zach. So I'm going to ask Aaron when I see Aaron next week, and then I'm just going to bring those stories to the next meeting that I'm in, and I'm going to tell everybody these horrific stories about you. Got it? That sounds fine. Some of them might be a little out there, but oh, we've got some good ones because- my friend Zach was in their young adults thing and he brought me and they had like an anime club and everything. And we had a lot of fucking fun. It was so fun. Oh God. We did a lot of stupid stuff. I mean, I could tell you a couple now, but I don't think we have time for them. But... Can't believe you have like just came out and just asked if I'm at Ransom Library. That was so creepy. I was like, what? Sorry. Oh, no, I didn't want to be creepy. No, I was... not creepy. Not creepy. <laughs> Wrong kind of creepy. It's like funny creepy. Yeah. No, I mean, I was like, I was going to send Erin uh, a message on Facebook and I saw like her friends list by accident. You were on there and I was like, oh, that's a familiar name. I think we just confirmed that one. <laughs> so oh man interesting so yeah no yeah ask her about that you'll have some some interesting uh uh, i'll let her know what story she tells me about you so then you know exactly how well i know you afterwards okay (laughs) sounds good but yeah it's funny stuff Ah, i miss it i was i've been meaning to get back in there and see her um her nickname's bob we call her bob zach and i it's like a whole thing i don't remember why i started calling her that um, but we used to have a lot of fun. Nerf nights and everything. Oh my gosh. It's been too long. They're um, slowly opening back up. So if you were to like call or something, you can make like a quote browsing appointment and just go look around. Oh, I'd probably just walk in. I know Mace. I know them. You, they might, all just, know you might just walk in. They'll let you come in. We're letting patrons oh. just come into the building right now. So uh, they're all awesome. They're all so laid back. Macy and, uh, and Aaron, they'll let me in. They'll let me in. But yeah, I miss it. I haven't seen the new place. I haven't seen it, so I'm I'm like to. It is so gorgeous. You really like the the reading room is like backed right up to the Kalamazoo River, basically. So, oh like, really? You're sitting in it, and you can see like the water and everything. It's gorgeous. Oh, that sounds so nice. Ah, oh, sounds so nice. I mean, I miss the old place because there's a lot of memories there. Almost burned that place down a couple times, but like, oh, wait, I want to see it. The new place. I bet it's just awesome. Anyway, so that's cool. That's cool that there's a connect that like you work there. I I wanted to work there for so long, like going from like a kid in high school to volunteering there and whatnot, but they never had a position open. And Aaron was like, oh yeah, when we, when we uh, get the new building, we'll hire some new people and I'll I'll get you a job. It's like, "Uh, here I am. So tell her I'm still waiting on that. She might laugh. (laughs) I'll tell her, I'll tell her, I'll say, you know, we opened the new building and I met Dakota like through Western and I should have met him sooner. What's going on? (laughs) If you had been going there when Zach wasn't in the Navy and he was still back here, it was so much fun. Like my friend Zach, we had a lot of fun, um, ner- like Nerf nights and whatnot. I'm surprised you probably have seen some people from that in, but yeah, yeah we had a lot of fun. So are you from that area then? Uh, no, you just like. It's a little complicated. My grandparents live on C Avenue. Uh, and I actually like lived with them for the last four years, but, um, my, like, I kind of partially grew up in Plainwell because like my mom is really close to her parents. Mm. Um, but I grew up actually in Port Huron. Oh, okay. Wow. Distance. (laughs) My 
I'm sorry. Wait, get out. I'm from Sandusky. Sandusky? An hour north of Port Huron. Yeah, I've been there. Sandusky no is a really nice, like, touristy area. Wait, no, I'm from Sandusky, Michigan. Like, not, yeah. not Ohio. No, not Ohio, Michigan. I'm so happy. That's so cool. Originally from Croswell, which is even closer to Port Huron. I know. Croswell has the stupid-ass band program that would always make me upset because they'd play stupid rock music at the, at the music festival thing. Oh, man, don't get me started on marching band. <laughs> it made me it. upset, too, because all of our shows were just another rock show like we did a queen's show and then we did an 80s show and it was like i'm tired of this and then i switched schools then i switched schools <laughs> oh that makes me so excited that makes me so happy were you a big red no i was a husky okay put here on northern never would be a big red yeah northern okay <laughs> i would never be a big red uh-uh do you know do you know desiree gibbs name's familiar that's my cousin really this is how are you my co-chair and i didn't know this <laughs> oh Hey guys, I'm just uh, looking at the numbers um, we got here, and we're definitely not at enough for quorum um, because we got cabinet here. So I'm going to give a, a couple more minutes, um, and I'm trying to get our guests in the meeting as well. So. Mm -hmm. How's everyone's week? Doing good. Everyone having a good week. Bronco fabulous. Bronco, never utter those words again, please. 
uh, and we can continue <laughs> asking people how their weeks were. <laughs> Bronco fabulous. Oh my gosh. I swear there's ancient text somewhere that has to say that's like terrible to say. That's just, but I applaud it. Bronco tabulous. <laughs> like Bronco unfortunate, am I right? So no, not that one either. Let's take, take Bronco. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Western, yay, we're Broncos. No, I don't see anyone else talking, because I'll talk. I will talk to fill the air, since we don't have any tunes coming in. Until someone stops me. You can make some tunes. Just oh, I, I could, but I like to talk. <laughs> so. Here I am talking. Really? really? I have no idea. I know, it's crazy. No one knows. I'm so quiet. I could sing. Oh, heavens no. Me singing. I haven't sang since high school. The last thing I sang in was, and you're not going to believe this, and it was oddly enough my senior year of high school, was, um, oh, shoot, Madagascar the Musical Junior. Can you believe that? So bizarre. So bizarre. Um, it, yeah, I have pictures that would haunt you. Um, but I did it because I was asked and I sang and it was bad. It was okay. It was all right. But that's the last time I sang. And I don't plan on singing again. Um, unless you'd like, unless, uh, who, who suggested that? Day Unique Door. Oh, sorry. Why have I got emails coming in? Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, do, 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 let me. Sorry, I got an email. Now I have to stop talking to you all. My apologies. That's all right. <laughs> oh, oh no! I'm Hang on. Hearing from you, anyways. <laughs> ah, so mean. Uh, one of my senators um, doesn't have apparently the link for this. Can we like resend that or something? Yes, I will throw it in the chat. I've been uh, sending it to people that uh, email me, but um, looks like that's been uh, which senator time. is it? Day Unique Doris. Looks like that's been I'll a work on that. Thing for, uh, Thank you. For today's meeting, first first joint session of the uh, of the year, but I'm going to go ahead and get started and start running through attendance while the other people uh, start rolling in, so we can uh, get moving. That's not the right page. Stand by. That's the right one. All right, that's not been updated. Speaker Shapiro. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then we'll go back up to the top. Senator Smith. Senator Smith. Senator Mel Holcomb. Here. Senator Fitzsimmons. Here. Senator Pastor. Here. Senator Mutombo. Senator Lewis. Senator Doris. I think she was trying to get in, but we'll go back through. Senator Gonzalez. She's going to be a couple minutes late, but she'll be here. I'm here. She's here. Senator Martino. Senator Madrum Roy. Here. Senator Ewing. Here. That was a yes. All right. Uh, Senator Sanchez. Here. Senator Taylor. Here. Senator Griggs. Here. Senator DeMarco. Here. Senator Timing. Here. Senator Chetchtree. Present. 
Senator Byrne. Here. Senator Rowan. Dang, we're on a straight. Senator McCray. Uh, Sophia? I don't know if this document was updated. Doesn't look like it's been updated. That's a problem. <laughs> Good thing is, I know the changes. <laughs> Speaker Crosby. Here. Representative uh, Bonifer. Here. Rep Ramos. Representative Fudel. Representative Sidon. Here. Representative Horoski. Here. Glad to see you got in. Representative Merrick. Here. Representative Sackrider. Representative Higgins. Here. Representative Gordon. Is it normal for people to have a person? I don't think so. I'm Here. sorry, so that one more time. Can you say that one more time? You cut out. Maybe she wasn't talking to us, but I got her attendance. Representative Garneau. Yeah, I'm here, sorry. <laughs> Representative Bose. Representative Seahorn. Representative Simsick. Representative Winger. Representative Tatali. Here. Representative Raymakers. Representative Mangerswarn. Representative Taylor. Representative Allen. Representative Robinson. Here. Representative Raisman. Representative Gerdin. Representative Majid. Representative Bisa. Representative Cochran. Representative Heffron. Representative Smith. Representative Hagel. Here. Representative Anksman. Representative Nashich. Representative Rogers, are you in yet? So they're gonna be late, so I'll leave it like that. Representative Avila. Here. Representative Pritt. Here. Representative Dobbs. Representative Holzberger. Or should I say Secretary Holzberger? He put in the slack. He'd be a little bit late. Okay. Uh, Representative Jackson. Here. Representative Boswell. Here. Representative Lambeth. Representative Whitfield. Here. Representative Griswold. Representative Williams. Representative, I don't know how to say that. I'm not gonna lie. Rozowski? Rozowski? Please correct me uh, when I mess your name up. Uh, Representative Cirillo. Representative Hickelner. Representative Paddock. She's on mine. So I'm here. Okay. Uh, she will need to be on her own device if she wants to vote today. Representative Jackson. Okay. Representative Jackson. Here. Representative Flores. Representative Obermeyer. 
Representative Diaz Rodas. Representative Brew. We are not there, folks. Let me go back through. I'll see if I'll check the chat and see if people rolled in while I was going through that list. Senator Doris is present. So Tumbo's here. Senator Lewis, are you present yet? All right, um, we're close. We are two off. The, looks like the two people that are running a little late will will be ready to go once they get here. All right, let's I spoke with Roger here now. So we do have a quorum. Nobody leave. <laughs> Just a second, I'll get our agenda put up. Awesome, awesome. Happy Western Wednesday, everybody. Glad we were able to get back and get started and not have to miss this important meeting. Um, I don't really have that many notes today, um, just that we have a uh, guest speaker. So please be sh guest speakers, should I say. So please uh, be sure to treat them with uh, as much respect and, and decorum as possible um, as they're here to uh, help us, help them, help students. Um, we've already done roll call. Um, positional reports will be in the meeting minutes uh, and a couple communications. Uh, regarding the legacy. So for those of you who haven't seen it, I hope you have by now. Uh, the legacy is our new newsletter that is sent out monthly every second Wednesday of, of the month. Um, and if you haven't completed the survey that's in there, please go do that. It's all the way at the bottom because your feedback is important as well. Um, but we have a couple of opportunities to engage with you guys. Um, one being the newsletter address. If you saw the first one, um, you saw that the beginning of that email is from President West. Uh, the next one's going to come from me. And then the um, March and April version, we're going to do one senator and one representative. So it's a, a way for you guys to, to get engaged in that process and uh, kind of have some fun. It's going to be completely random. Um, but if you guys are interested, please fill out that Google form that was in the email that I sent today. If you didn't get that email, please let me know in the chat and I can forward it to you because I know that I believe somebody said that they didn't get it. 
uh, in terms of 30 second shout outs. If you are somebody who doesn't like to speak or you want your 30 second shout out to be written as well and posted on the WSA website, uh, we're gonna be including those as well on the next uh, issues of the legacy. Uh, it's gonna be one of the standing items. Uh, so it's another way to uh, not just get in touch with the people that are in this meeting, but the, all of the students across campus because it's a publication that goes to all of our students. Lastly, um, the photo. Uh, we need a picture for this month's, um, or should I say February's um, version issue of the legacy. So after this meeting, if you guys are interested in hanging out uh, with a few of you guys wanna hang out, have a mix of cabinet representatives, um, senators, and we'll, we'll all take a picture. If you have your mask, we'll put our mask on and, and take a look screenshot and that'll be our, our main image for the February publication. Uh, but hopefully uh, you guys are happy with these opportunities to engage with the legacy and I hope you guys take part in them. Uh, with that, I will entertain a motion to approve today's minutes. Motion to approve the minutes. Second. So moved and seconded that we approve the minutes. Is there consent? Consent. Consent has been called. Second. Is, there Is there any opposition? Hearing none, the amendments have been approved from the last meeting. I would also entertain a motion to approve today's agenda as presented. I make a motion to approve today's agenda as presented. Second. Motion has been made Consent. to approve. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> Any opposition? Hearing none, we'll consider the agenda approved. We'll hop right into our guest speakers. Uh, as time is of the essence, have they been promoted? Doesn't look like it. Looks like they're getting there now, though. Super excited. Uh, but we do have our Associate Vice President for Community Partnerships, Kara Wood, our Syndicate's Direct Medical Director, Dr. Gail Rogerio, and Jim Rutherford, who is the Kalamazoo County um, Health director, I believe, is his position's title. Uh, health officer, should I say. Uh, and I'll let them take it away. Uh, we'll give them uh, 25 minutes uh, with a, an extension votable on five minutes. Uh, floor is yours. All right. Thank you, Jacoby. We appreciate the opportunity to speak again with the WSA leadership and um, want to thank you all for your engagement in the last meeting and um, for the work of the leadership team since that time. Um, Dr. Rogerio and I have met with the WSA leadership a couple of times, staying on top of issues of importance to students. So thank you for that. Um, just to get us kicked off, we will be sending out a communication here shortly, just as an update on a variety of different topics, but um, of most importance, one, welcome back to campus and um, Hopefully you remember all of the safety protocol from last fall and um, that as you do conduct yourself in in-person classes, that you're still maintaining distance, wearing your mask, and also um, making sure that all of the other protocol are being followed. So um, just as a reminder, those things are still in place and we're trying to get things opened up as much as possible over time as things progress. And um, I'll turn it over to uh, our friends at Syndicuse to give a quick update on how things went for the testing event and what they've been working on in terms of vaccine. You're there, Gail? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. So we have, um, hopefully all of you have received um, a survey in your portal to complete for phasing of vaccination. And that helps us to make sure that we place you in the proper categories for um, placement in the vaccination uh, phasing. And uh, we are using that as our tool to um, work with the health department on getting uh, times for vaccination. As you know, vaccines are two stops, one uh, first, and then you have 21 days later, you'll get your second vaccine. Um, and we've had, we've sent out about 16,000 uh, surveys. Um, there's no email that was attached to those, um, which might be a little bit different than you've had uh, in terms of surveys before, but this is automatically on your portal 
for, for you to complete. Um, there's a process by which you can submit um, information back if you think that the accuracy of the phasing that you were provided, um, which will be sent back to you shortly after completion of your survey is incorrect, then you can, can give us information so we can make sure that we correct that and have accurate information about what phase would be most appropriate for you to be in. All right, you want to turn it over to Jim to give an update on the uh, county's vaccine process. Jim. Sure. Uh, good, good afternoon or good evening, everybody, and I appreciate the opportunity or the invite to kind of provide an update as to where we're at. Um, obviously, uh, we uh, applaud all of the work that WMU has done, and we meet with, with Kara and her staff and Gal and her staff on a very regular basis. Um, we applaud them for the work that they've done as it relates to um, providing, uh, I think, a very secure environment. Uh, they've done a significant amount of testing from the beginning, uh, and uh, they've done a significant amount of, of work to uh, create, I think, a very safe environment, as safe as possible, uh, given uh, the fact that this is a global pandemic. Um, it's a challenge for everybody. Um, obviously, we are transitioning uh, within local public health um, uh, towards uh, providing vaccine for the community. Uh, that rollout has begun. Uh, we have uh, set up an incident command structure uh, and we are uh, done with, the, there's a prioritization guidelines that we get from, it starts with the CDC and it goes to the state health departments and then it goes to local public health. But for the most part, um, the, the guidance really identifies who is um, going first as it relates to uh, being eligible for receiving the vaccine. As Gail alluded to, um, there's two uh, vaccines that we're using at this point in time. The Pfizer product is, is um, a, a double dose as well as the Moderna product. Uh, Pfizer is 21 days in between first and second shot and Moderna is 28 days in between first and second dose. So the priority that we've been working with is 1A and we're complete with that. And that involved some of the staff at WMU. These are our first responders. These are our individuals that, that have been involved and engaged with um, uh, first response from the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, and then as we move through into 1B, um, that involves uh, any individual over the age of 65. The, the uh, understanding for that or explaining why that is, is that 94% um, uh, of the fatalities in Kalamazoo County have really occurred in people over the age of 60 years old. So that's really the most vulnerable population. And those are the individuals that have taken the brunt of this, of this disease. Um, most of the diseases or most of the significant illnesses and, and hospitalizations and obviously deaths have occurred within this population. So it stands to reason that we really wanna focus uh, predominantly within that population. Uh, the other groups within 1B are our education K through 12. Um, so we're working with our schools uh, to try to, to provide and create as safe a, of an environment as possible. Um, we know that most of those K through 12 systems have been uh, remote since the beginning. Many of them haven't even had a school um, face to face. Um, so we're working within those populations as well. Let me back up. When I talk about people over the age of 65, demographically, that represents about 45,000 residents in Kalamazoo County. When I talk about K through 12, the employees, teachers, and, and other support staff, that's, that's about six or 7,000 individuals. And then we get into the other essential workers within 1B, and those are those individuals that haven't been able to re work remote because their job doesn't really allow for that. They may be police, fire, it could be a wastewater treatment operator, it could be a clerk's office, but those essential services that have required um, them to come to work every day, um, and hopefully they've been safeguarding their environments with wearing a mask and social distancing and some of those other um, strategies that we've been recommending all along. So, um, you know, your group, obviously demographic wise is, uh, I hate to say this, but the reality is, is it's actually fortunate that your group has been the least impacted as a result of this disease. And I, I know that some people have, you know, suffered significantly and there are people within um, you know, under the age of 60, obviously that have died and we've had fatalities. Um, 
but the reality is, is uh, particularly for young adults, uh, this has hit them a lot less significantly than it has hit other demographics. So, uh, you know, your, your group, your age group is kind of down the list a little bit. Um, and we're, we'll be looking at 1C uh, when we get to that, that younger population. So that's kind of a, a, just a summary of where we're at. We've distributed, you know, we have been provided probably close to about 12,000 doses and we've distributed, um, I, I believe uh, at the end of this week, we will have distributed close to 10,000 of those. Um, you know, we do clinics um, and they're getting very large, uh, our largest. We have a clinic tomorrow where we'll vaccinate 15,000 teachers. So we've really developed, I think, uh, several different models. We also do out, out clinics. Uh, today we visited a homeless shelter in downtown Kalamazoo. Uh, next week we'll be visiting um, uh, some of the north side uh, churches to reach that um, predominantly African-American over the age of 65 population. So a lot of thought has been put into the development of these different types of clinics, um, and it's going to take some time. We know that we'll be doing this well into the spring and, and into the summer months as well. So with that, I'll turn it back over to Kara, and, and I'm available for any questions that you might have. You're on mute, Kara. Thank you. <laughs> it's getting late in the day. I've pushed that mute button too many times today. So the big takeaway here for the WSA folks is to make sure you go into your Syndicuse portal and fill out that survey if you are interested in getting a vaccine. But also make sure that your friends and constituents are well aware too. Um, because unless Gail has the data and the information, she can't ship it to Jim to be scheduled. So. Um, We'd rather be prepared than uh, scrambling to get our students, faculty, and staff scheduled. So with that, we can go ahead and open it up for questions that any of you have. I can start us out um, with the first question. Thank you all uh, for being here today. Um, for some context, I meet uh, monthly with Kara, so this is kind of, you know, many of these are topics that we have touched on. Um, I'm curious if you can address the group, you know, eventually, hopefully spring, summer, we're in a position to where the vaccine is so available that anyone who wants it can get it. Um, and as we're seeing already, um, there are folks who don't want it. And so when we get into a potential position of we have all of this vaccine, but no one left to take it and we've still haven't hit that threshold. Um, so my question is, you know, how, how are we planning to um, kind of address some concerns and, and what kind of communication do you think is going to be most effective um, in reaching some of those groups uh, that may not want to take the vaccine? Hey, so um, we're partnering with Health Promotion to sort of put out some more messaging and information. There's a lot of information on the CDC's website, as well as uh, information that we can get um, through our local agency. But I think it's important that we start to ha create dialogue and, and discussion about the pros and cons of vaccination in general and, and what that means for not only ourselves, but our community members and for our family members. Um, so we do have plans to um, escalate, you know, increasing messaging around vaccination and, and what that means as a student to be vaccinated. So if I could just add on to that, you know, our objective at the national level really to receive, to get to the point where we've got that herd immunity, um, which is really the, 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 the target that we're trying to reach um, we, we were objective is to vaccinate 70% of the population. Well, there's a significant demand for it now. We do, you know, we do anticipate um, it coming in waves. I think that there's, there's obviously, there's people that have much more to lose than others. And again, those are the people that have um, compromised immunity. They have pre-existing health conditions. They are over the age of 65. So, you know, we've got 20,000 individuals on a waiting list. Um, so there's no shortage of demand, but we do anticipate that once we get through the, the 1B and get into 1C, um, we still have to reach, you know, those, those outliers. I do believe that there's a certain group that's stepping back and saying, I want to wait a little bit to see if there's any short-term, you know, uh, uh, considerations. 
Um, I know that there's always going to be a portion of the population, and we've always encountered this with vaccinations, where they're just opposed, and, and there's not much that we can do to change that, um, whether or not that's you know 10% or 20% of the population. Um, but I'm hoping that we get the, the, the majority and that we can get to a position where we've got that herd immunity. The more of our senior population that we can get uh, complete immunity towards, um, the better off we'll be as a whole. Thank you. Vice President Barona. Hello, thank you guys for being here. So my question is for those students who do fall into the 1C group, is that something that kind of they'll be able to access on campus? And then like, do you know anything of, will they have to have a prescription from like a doctor that proves that they have some kind of pre-existing condition or kind of how will that work for those students who are falling in that category? So currently we're using that survey tool to make sure people are in the proper phases. So, you know, you'll complete the survey tool, we'll put you into the proper phase, you'll receive a message back from us verifying that you're in that phase. And we use that information to set up your appointment through the county's website. It could be other areas. At this time, we're doing it through the county. Um, we have applied as an institution for our own vaccine supply. Um, if we do get the vaccine supply, then we would be administering it ourselves. However, at this time, most of uh, all of our vaccines are going through the health department. So we encourage people, everyone to complete the survey, even if you would like to decline at this time to complete the survey, it lets us kind of understand where we're at. And it helps us to understand, you know, where are we missing um, um, education or um, getting feedback about what sort of questions people might have or concerns or worries about getting vaccinated. So uh, from our perspective, um, even if uh, local colleges uh, don't get access to vaccine, we've got a great relationship with, with Gal and her staff. And you know, we would most likely, if, if indeed it's yet this spring and there's the predominant amount of you are still on campus, we probably would wanna take advantage of Syndicuse for one of our out clinics and just work in unison with them. Uh, I think that that would probably be the most sensible way is to, to bring the vaccine. Uh, within on the campus and and Gal and her staff, Dr. Rajir and her staff have just done an incredible amount of of testing. Uh, so we have complete and total confidence that they can really pull off, um, you know, clinics in unison with us, and we can effectively vaccinate, you know, thousands of of, of the students. Um, but getting that garnering that information now uh, through that survey opportunity is really um, is really helpful, particularly when they'll be prioritizing within their population. So obviously people with pre-existing health conditions, compromised immunity, um, those individuals will go first no matter what their age is. And that could open up pretty rapidly. So um, I, I would encourage uh, students to take advantage of that survey opportunity. Uh, we'll go Rep Horowski. Hi, good evening. Thank you for coming again. Um, I have a question. Um, when I was filling out the survey, the first question was asking um, if I have applied to receive the vaccine. Um, I would like to know if you are able to explain more how it's the process and how I can let the university know or other students let the university know that we are interested in getting the vaccine. So yeah, we know that some students may have been offered vaccine through another, you know, another pathway. Maybe they have clinic work somewhere and they're, they've been offered vaccination there. So the, the first question is just to ascertain whether or not you've already received a vaccine or you're planning to get a vaccine elsewhere. So we can make sure that, you know, yeah, we think that you're still, you're in a phase 1A and we really want to make sure you're vaccinated. You know, are you in the system yet or do you need help kind of accessing the system? So that's, that's the main reason why we asked those questions in the beginning. All right, and then the, the yes uh, answer would be for that you were interested in receiving the vaccine, correct? Yeah, if, you, if you're interested in receiving a vaccine, we have to kind of acknowledge that people understand that, you know, getting the vaccine doesn't mean that you like burn your mask and, you know, get the keg out. It's, it's you know, you continue to use all those safety protocols that are currently in place. Um, you continue to do everything on campus that that you're you're currently doing on campus. It's just that now you've added protection and immunity to yourself and and those that are are coming into contact with you. Thank you. 
Vice President Effinger. Thank you very much for being here today. Um, I was just wondering how long it took to vaccinate group 1A, and then I'm assuming, you know, as we continue in groups, groups get bigger and vaccine supply may be more challenging to come upon if for whatever reason is more people need it. So I'm wondering how long it will predict to take to vaccinate group 1B then. So for us, um, you know, we're, there's three entities that are providing vaccines at this point in time and a lot of partners that are helping us get there, but it's it's Bronson Borges and the local health department. So we've all kind of taken on 1A and, and 1A is a lot of hospital employees. It's a lot of first responders. Uh, most police uh, and fire are cross-trained to be first responders. So we considered anybody that had, you know, access to patient you know, response or patient care, um, part of that group. We were able to actually get through that group in about three weeks. Um, we were, you know, the governor has been pretty aggressive and, and I don't falter in, in that regard. We, they opened up 1B well in advance of us completing 1A and we still have stragglers coming in for 1A. Um, you know, we also did all of the dentists uh, in partnership with the health systems. Um, you know, so there, there I, I don't know how many I would ascertain that we're probably looking at between the three organizations, um, roughly 20,000 people that fit that category, maybe a little less or a little more. So we were, we were pretty quick through that. 1B is a much larger lift, as I, as I indicated, with just a senior population alone, 45,000, and then you know the schools and, and the other 1B is huge. Those essential workers are, there's, there's essential workers that you don't even think about. When you, when you look at uh, where you get groceries, every one of those employees have not been able to, to stay at home. You can't do your job from home. Postal, same thing. Um, you know, places like um, jails and congregate environments are part of that. Um, you know, nursing homes are part of that. So that's, that's you know, upwards of a community with a quarter million residents um, or higher. Um, that's a huge lift. That's probably over 100,000 people. So that's going to take a stretch of time um, to be able to get there. But again, between both health systems and us, we're able to do if, if the, the biggest challenge for us is really the availability of vaccine. And, um, you know, we're, we're just it's trickling in and we'll get some weeks where we get, you know, 3000 doses, some weeks where we get no doses. Um, some weeks where we get Moderna, some weeks where we get, you know, Pfizer. So planning clinics around that has been extremely challenging, but I think that's going to change. And I think that um, this administration at, at the national level is really putting an emphasis on production and, and logistics, getting that out. And I think most local public health departments in the country, particularly the larger ones, are in a position to really, you know, get moving. If, if I had uh, an unending supply of vaccine, I could probably get to a point in time where I'm doing 5,000 per clinic. Um, and that's in partnership with places like Western Michigan University, where I've got nursing students coming in from, from their world, where Gales people are helping out, where KVC is providing nursing students, where the Michigan National Guard is. So, you know, realistically, um, we're only as slow as the availability of vaccines. So, and I know other communities, I look to, you know, Kent County, you've seen what they're doing you know, they're, they're scaling up to be able to do 20,000 a day because they partnered with their hospitals to do it in one spot at the DeVos Center. So I think that we're ready in Michigan, and I'm, I'm confident that, that once the vaccine starts rolling out, we'll really start cranking out those numbers and hopefully get into, um, that's why I say to, to the students, um, you know, an opportunity to get that, um, particularly if, if, if you've got those those um, those health issues, take advantage of it and, and get going on that survey. Thank you very much. Jim, I think we also wanted to mention to the students um, a little bit about what's gonna happen February 1st. So the um, bars and restaurants are gonna have the ability to have some in in restaurant capacity. And so um, we'll probably send out a communication, but um, it's really important that um, we, we stay mindful of the fact that we still have a disease to control and um, it is really our social interactions outside of the classroom 
and campus that um, are where we saw the issues before. So if we can work together to mitigate some of the risk, the better off we'll be down the line. Yeah, and I know that for those of you that we talked to last time, I don't want to sound like a broken record. Um, and I've got, you know, honestly, I've got a student at Western and I've got, you know, I've got kids all your age and I don't want to sound like I'm, I'm lecturing you, but the reality is, is this is still a very prevalent disease. There's, there's variations that we're starting to see all over the country. We've, we've seen them in, you know, in Michigan. Um, so don't rest on, on, you know, just because there's a, a, the availability of vaccine and it's a very limited availability. Well, that's a great public health tool. Don't forget the tools that we've used to get us this far. And, and Western has been really great and phenomenal in terms of working very diligently at trying to educate the population, working with the fraternities, the sororities, um, working with our owners of restaurants and bars. Um, when we see outbreaks and when we see you know significant outbreaks and illnesses uh, and disease transmission, it's typically in environments where we're not adhering to those those mitigation, those recommended strategies, the distancing, mask wearing, um, you know, personal responsibility, hygiene. Um, and then, you know, I, I, I was young once and, you know, I've been known to throw back a couple of beers myself, but when we do that, sometimes we lower our inhibitions. And I look at some of the, the challenges that we've had in Michigan and and it's typically in environments where bars aren't doing their job or, or you know, party people that are sponsoring parties are allowing things to happen. And I just ask all of you to continue to be mindful of that, be patient. Um, we're gonna get to a, a point in time where we are able to remove the mask, but that's gonna be some time. And even after you get fully vaccinated, it takes, you know, first and second dose, that's a month there. And then it's a couple more weeks before you know, research is telling us that you've got immunity. And even then, you know, not everybody around you has that, that immunity. So we're just asking people to continue to be responsible. Um, we know that there's a lot of um, challenge in, in, in any student environment, uh, but we ask that, that, you know, just give it some more time uh, and, and we'll get beyond this. All right. Um, I will recognize myself really quick. Quick question. What is your um, open rate on your emails and your communications? Are you seeing that uh, a lot of students are actually getting the information that you guys are sending out? Gail, do you have um, any information on that? I don't have any statistics. Um, so we didn't have an email attached with our um, survey. survey. So I can tell you that of the 16,000 people that the survey was sent to, that uh, 3,702 people responded as of yesterday morning. You mean responded to the survey? Responded to the survey, correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering if your your emails that you, the COVID um, team was sending out was getting like a, a a good read rate. That's a good question, Jacoby. I'll I'll look into that. Okay, thank you, uh, Vice President Charter Harris, uh, to round us out. Yeah, my question is pretty simple. Um, have any of you guys received the vaccine yourselves? And if so, can you guys tell us how you felt after receiving the doses or anything about it? Sure. I don't know, Gail. You want to go ahead? Yes, I completed both of my doses of vaccine. I had a little sore arm, the first one, um, just like regular flu shot kind of sore arm, really was gone the next day and had no side effects at all after my second dose. So mine was a little bit different than that. I, um, I had no, uh, no um, symptoms uh, on my first dose and that was a Pfizer dose. Um, the second dose was a little different and I've had, um, um, I've had the shingles vaccine as well. And I would kind of compare it to that where the next day I was, I was a little sore and I, I kind of felt some of the, you know, basic symptoms, but that's basically my body reacting to the vaccine. And, and really that's, that's part of the, 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 the process. But at the national level, when we vaccinated this many people, we've had very few reports of 
you know, um, we've had some obviously people that have a high sensitivity to, they have a lot of allergies. Those people, we recommend that they talk to their primary care physician before they receive the vaccine. Some of the individuals may have actually uh, allergic reactions to some of the, the ingredients within the vaccine. And those ingredients are listed on the CDC's website. So you might wanna take a look at that if you have a real sensitivity to, to, to um, potentially some of those ingredients. But overall, it's been very well received. It's really kind of a, I'll tell you, it's kind of a dream vaccine to get that level of, of efficacy, upwards of 95%. You know, the, the, the challenge for us is really the double dose creates a lot of work. So well, we do know that there's, there's some single doses on the horizon from uh, companies like Johnson & Johnson. So we're looking forward to, to that ultimately being part of the, um, the landscape moving forward. Awesome. With that, we do have time expired unless anybody has anything else and they want to vote to um, extend. Hearing none, seeing none. Thank you guys so much for coming in today. We always appreciate uh, you guys coming in and listen to, listening to our concerns and answering our questions. Uh, we hope to, to keep that line of communication that we have uh, garnered open. Thanks for the Thank opportunity. You. Thank you. All right, folks, back to business. All right, no unfinished business. We will move past committee breakout because we don't have that either. On to new business. There's a university bill sent out for the campus involvement initiative that is read only. Um, but the big thing that's probably going to take most of our time today is the student election code. Uh, so that I will yield the floor to Vice President Eagle um, as she uh, goes through the student code with you guys. All right. Thank you, Jacoby. Um, do I have sharing screen permissions? You do now. Thank you. All righty. Um, sweet. Okay. Um, all right, folks, um, we're going to go through this section by section, if that's okay with everyone. I hope you all read it. I hope you all have your edits prepared and ready so we can just blast right through this. Um, yeah. Uh, so starting right with the, the preamble, um, the edits that I have adjusted to this um, were just to include that we now have senators running in the general election. Um, the year has changed and also that we have the House of Representatives here and referred to collectively as the legislative branch. Did everyone approve the preamble? Okay, cool, we'll move on. <laughs> Article one, section one, um, the only edits that I had to make to this were to add the legislative branch because previously we just had the Senate, um, had to add the bylaws in subsection C because originally we just had the constitution. And then I went ahead and just in section D added governing documents because originally we just had the constitution. Is everyone a-okay with article one? Okay, section two, well, article two, my apologies. Um, okay, I don't remember what the original time was. I think it was 24 hours. Um, so we went ahead and lengthened that to 48 hours. Um, I think all we added to section C was we added in that it was per article three, section one, subsection three, B1. Um, and we added interested Western Michigan University students so that anyone can join the EPC. And then we also added that the chair reserves the right to remove committee members with a two thirds affirmative vote from the executive branch. The reasoning behind that was we don't want drama on the team. And if we have drama, you shouldn't be on the team. Um, is everyone okay with section one? I, I can't see the chat if 
Vice President Eagle, I have two things. Yes. Um, one, can we can include a committee composed of WSA senators, representatives, and interested Western Michigan University students? And then would it also be possible to add that they may be removed, uh, remove committee members with a two thirds affirmative vote from the executive branch? They may appeal to the judicial council. Yes, I am a okay with both of those. Um, I'm going to, uh, Jacoby for clarification, um, do, do those changes have to be voted on by everyone? Um, it's an amendment. Um, so we would move into discussion. He would have to propose an amendment. Well, he can't propose an amendment. So uh, a legislator would have to, a legislator would have to propose a set amendment. Then we would enter discussion on set amendment and then vote on set amendment. Okay. Is there a motion? Yeah, I, I saw a motion to propose uh, whatever Eric said. Motion has been made. Is it seconded? Second. It's been. Moved and seconded um, that Eric, can you uh, provide the verbiage please? And then we'll enter discussion. Sure, so just add representatives after senators in section C and then in subsection A of C um, add a second sentence, they may appeal to the judicial council or the removed individual may appeal to the judicial council. And Ruby, can you put the, the text in, in a different color that we're uh, yes. in discussion on? So now we're in discussion on the amendment. Uh, so we'll start a separate speakers list if anybody has any topics on that. Oh, Pooey, that's the text. My apologies. That's fine. Um, not seeing any in the chat, not hearing any. We'll move to a vote. Consent. Consent Second. Called. Seconded. Any opposition? Hearing none. Uh, it, that amendment is approved. Um, should I move it back to yellow now? Yep. Okay, thank you. Okay, moving on to section two, um, EPC, um, it used to be elections promotion committee. I changed it to EPC as specified at the beginning of the document. Um, dates and deadlines, originally it said that there was no, no deadline um, before dates had to be made public. So now we're going to say they will be made public upon receiving affirmative vote. Um, there wasn't a deadline at um, when I had to get back to you. So I went ahead and said, within 24 hours, I'll get back to you. Um, and then this is just a confidentiality clause. If you're on the EPC, you should not be revealing any candidate information. You are an unbiased party. Um, so that just clarifies that. Point of information, Chris Sly has an important message in chat that I think should be read. Oh, my apologies. I. How do I? Of, I'll, I'll read it for you. Point of clarification. Okay. Ruby was presenting and doing a question and answer. Now we're voting on changes, which typically happens during discussion. Uh, will we have discussion on the document as a whole at the end of the presentation? Um, we've been operating, I believe, most of the year under the, the, the point that question and answer was included in discussion. Um, so if you have um, a discussion point or a question that should be raised at this time. But yes, we'll do a, an entire document um, overview at the end. Oh, so don't do don't do the overview right you, now. Just move you into keep going, you can keep going section by section. I think it works. Okay. Okay. Um, was there was there any um, discussion or changes on section two? I got uh, uh, Speaker Shapiro. No, that was a an accident. My, okay, my... Uh, Vice President Poole. Hello, um, point of information, I guess for me, for any of the times where you say like 24 hours after receiving notification, does that include um, business days like Monday through Friday or does it not include like the weekend or is it just Monday through Sunday, like no matter what, 24 hours, I guess? Um, 
Me personally, um, I'm going to leave it at 24 hours rather than business hours. I know when I was a candidate last year, um, I was like when demerits happened, I wanted, I wanted a response pretty quickly. Um, and I can imagine if that were to happen, um, quick communication, um, would alleviate some stress. So I have no problems being available 24 hours. Well, let me sleep, but like, I'm, I'm okay with it being like on the weekend. Thank you for the clarification. Vice President Effinger. Thank you, Executive Vice President Wright. Um, I have a question about the interpretation powers of the EPC. If a candidate were to inquire and the EPC were to perhaps give an order down or interpret the document in a way that the uh, inquiry may find to be unfair or biased in any way, shape or form, is there any appeals process in place? And if like, not, would it be possible to go to the Judicial Council again? Um, so you mean like if they get a demerit or if they... No, like if they're just asking for interpretation of the governing documents, like, hey, I have a question if I can buy pizza for these people to come to an event and the EPC says no, and they think that perhaps the oh. interpretation was wrong. Um, yes, yes, um, I don't think it says that anywhere in here. Um, if you hold on to that point while we go through, um, I, I would- Information, uh, wouldn't that be just covered by the, the bylaws already? Because this is a, a governing document and you're able to um, submit for review to the Judicial Council? Yes. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Jacoby, was there anyone else on the speakers list for this section? I don't, I don't have anyone else. All right, we'll move on to section three. Um, so originally it just said um, there, there wasn't a deadline on whether or not you could or could not run for the EPC. So I went ahead and added this because we have, we have had, I have had committee members in the fall. Um, don't want them to like drop out and run now. Um, so that's why that stands there. Um, Originally, it just said remain unbiased and neutral. I added nonpartisan in there. Um, okay, so originally, section C is where I'm at right now. There was not a boot camp before, and um, it didn't specify that like all advice you give has to be given to everyone. So I went ahead and added that. That way, every candidate is getting the same information. Um, this is just a GPA clause. I think it was. I don't remember what it originally was, if it was lower or higher, um, but I did go ahead and add this clause in here. Um, section F, again, I'm not sure what the GPA was, um, so I just put it at 2.0. I believe that's what the good academic standing is for um, Western. Um, and then this, this process was not previously outlined, so I went ahead and outlined. Um, the appeal process as found in Article 7, and I put it up here. So. Vice President Morris. Um, so I just have like a grammatical edit. Would that be at this time too, or would that be a different process? Okay. Um, up at the campaign boot camp where it's in parentheses, uh, not in parentheses, in quotations, uh, the period has to go outside of yep. the quotation. Okay. Oh, so we're in dis discussion on that. <laughs> is there any discussion? I think the period is fine where it's at, Alexis. Okay, keep it there. No. Uh, hearing none, seeing none, uh, vote. Is anybody gonna call consent? Consent. Consent has been called. Second. Thank you. Opposition? Hearing none, it's approved. Move forward. All right, I'll go ahead and move that period. All righty. Um, was there any other, anyone else on the speakers list for this section? No. All righty. So article three, section one, lots of yellow. <laughs> um, so this is um, a deadline right here for the intent to run form that changes every year. So that's all that that is. Um, and then 
we didn't we didn't used to have executive office and legislative office because you didn't used to have to run for senator through the student body so that's what that yellow clause right there states and then another deadline um and then this clause right here um states that you can only wait what oh yeah you can only run for one executive office position um but you can run for senator and like vice president you could run for both but if you won the vice president election you'd sacrifice your um senator seat that's that's what that clause says um c just says you have to be enrolled in part-time um this there didn't used to be a clause clarifying senator election so that's what that is for and then gpa for the executive candidates and then gpa for the legislative candidates that's what that covers and then moving down we have the executive slate and then um so there never used to be a campaign boot camp i am incorporating that this year um it's just a general kind of meeting you can attend if you're interested in running um so that's what these two the first h um describes the campaign boot camp and what time it'll be hosted and then i didn't used to exist um i think it would be important to schedule a campaign prep meeting with me especially if you're like new to wsa or anything like that i think it's important to lay down the process so that's what that is for and then this is another deadline of when you can drop out of the election uh, speaker shapiro could you uh, move back up to the a or b of section one Yes. Yeah, right there. So B, so I don't I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like candidates being able to run for both executive and legislative offices, legislative offices at the same time is kind of like uh, a conflict of interest. Um, you know, running for two positions at once, they're not fully in for one or the other. Um, and it kind of means like, like, in my opinion, now, that of course, opinion, uh, it means they just aren't all in for one or the other, or it doesn't matter where they land. Um, I feel like that should be changed to uh, no person, no person shall be a candidate for more than one office, rather than just executive office. Um, if, if, that, if that change could be allowed, and we can discuss it and get other ideas in on it. Are you making a motion? Corona? Yes, yes, please. A motion to change executive office to office and then pretty much getting rid of that subsection A there. Could that be elected office in your motion? Elected office. Thank you. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we strike a point A and change um, executive office. Um, we are now in discussion on that amendment. I'll start our new speakers list. Vice President Effinger. Thank you, Executive Vice President Wright. I remember going through the um, SEC last year, and this was kind of a bone of contention that got brought up as well, especially with senators who, uh, I'm just trying to keep precedent or perhaps consider other factors, because last year there was a discussion on should senators be able to run for multiple colleges if they're double majoring in two different colleges, and that was allowed. Um, so I think if we're going to limit people to either choosing executive branch or Senate, we should also have other stipulations in place to make sure that absolutely no conflict of interest is allowed to occur instead of some. Representative Garrett. Um, this could just be my opinion, but um, I believe that I think you, you should be able to run for both offices. I mean, even in the presidential race, you can run for president and Senate at the same time. So I feel like we should kind of mirror that. Um, I don't think you should be penalized for running for a higher office um, and not getting that higher office and being penalized for running for like, I guess, a lesser office. Uh, if you can see that a senator is being a lesser office, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Like you shouldn't be penalized for trying to seek executive office. So, yeah. Uh, Representative Garneau. Hi, guys. Um, so I I, uh, I co-chair for Ruby's stuff, and I just wanted to offer, like, a point. 
in that uh why we put this in and it's pretty much just because if somebody runs to be president or vice president they're going to get like lose their senate she- seat and getting a senate seat after the elections is very challenging to do and it's a massive process and we don't want a student to just drop out of wsa because they decided to run for president or vice president because while this is student government it's also an rso and we'd lose friends that was the whole point speaker shapiro I just want to uh, talk on what Representative Garrison uh, spoke on. I don't really think it's a punishment so much if you go ahead and or, uh, or whatever you said, uh, a demerit, whatever. Uh, if you run for uh, the presidency as a sitting senator or whatever, um, if you run for the presidency, you want the presidency. And I think if you want that, you should forego what you, not what you have now, but I think the idea of like splitting allegiance is so easy um, from the Senate, not to say that we're opposing here, but the Senate and the presidency. Um, I just don't really like, the, I don't, I don't think that's a, I don't think that's something I would vote in on a candidate who's like, oh, my backup plan, will end up in the Senate. That's fine. Um, you know, if they lose the, uh, the presidency, I think if they want the presidency and they have good ideas, they should focus on the presidency or if they want to be in the Senate, cause they have good ideas for their colleges to focus on the, that. But of course I understand where you're coming from with that. I do, but that's just, of course, my opinion. Vice President Morris. Yeah, so kind of like stemming into the land of opinions, I guess, right here is where um, I think that that would then become an individual campaign decision. I think those that are running for president are really passionate about the organization and we should be doing the most to retain them. Um, it, we would have washout if like the losing elect, you know, like there would be a big ego hit for someone that ran for executive office and then just like ended up in, you know, like the house and that would be their only option there for at that point. So kind of what Kathy was saying is like, we should focus on retaining the talent in our organization. And I think allowing people to run for two different um, would be a good way to do it. That I yield. Vice President Effinger. Thank you. I just kind of want to back up what Vice President Morris said and the fact that if we have someone that's a sitting senator and they're trying to run for president and lose, we have somebody that's dedicated to WSA who has put their time and shown the interest in moving up and, be, and advancing the organization because nobody runs for president to intentionally screw over the organization. Um, and so eliminating them entirely if they lose presidency and can't run for Senate to maintain their seat would seem to cause more damage to our RSO than it would benefit, in my opinion. I'd rather vote for somebody personally that I know is trying to do their best to make a positive impact on our campus by either running for one or the other to stay involved than vote for somebody who I know if they lose the election will be out entirely. Um. Speaker Shapiro. You've changed my mind. Oh, wait, that's it. Are you keeping your motion? <laughs> no, <laughs> dropping it. <laughs> can I drop the motion? Drop the motion. You've you changed can, my mind. Uh, you can make a motion to rescind. Mo- motion to rescind. Second. <laughs> Moved and seconded to rescind. Said edits. Um, is, <laughs> is there consent? Consent. Oh, all right. So, is there a second? Second. Is there any opposition? All right. You guys have me nervous for a second. All right. Ruby <laughs> Ford, um, uh, <laughs> oh, actually, um, we'll go back to the uh, the original speakers list. Um, Ruby, were you done presenting? Uh, for Article Three, yes. If um, is there is there more for Article Three? Uh, I'll take a moment to recognize myself. Uh, I know a, a big uh, portion of uh, going through this document last year was spent on the GPA change, um, and I, I see that that is brought up again. Um, I, I do want to note that the bylaw and the constitution, the governing documents say 2.75. So this would be in direct conflict to that. Um, So I don't think that it would be 
of standing if we voted to change it here because those documents supersede this. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to go against the Constitution. So, um, I guess I can't make that <laughs> motion um, for that, but somebody else can. I just wanted to raise the point. Motion to lower the GPA to two point seven five. Second. All right. Now we're in discussion on that. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. Seeing none. We'll move into a vote. Consent. Consent has been called. Is there a second? Second. Any opposition? All right, we'll consider that change final. All righty. Who's next mm -hmm. on the speakers list? That was it for this section, unless anybody else had something. All righty. Section two, candidate representatives. Um, so definition of candidate representatives. Um, the 2021 is the year. Um, and then this edit up here, I forgot. It says you may have, but you are not required to. Um, don't feel like you have to have candidate representatives. Um, and then this right here, if your candidate representative violates the rules that will count as one demerit against the candidate, um, y'all have to follow the same rules. And then there are election events that candidates are required to attend. A candidate representative cannot attend in place of the candidate. That's what that says. So is there any, any comments or changes for this article, this section? Vice President Effinger. Thank you. Sorry about this, but um, is there any limit to how many candidate representatives one candidate may have? Nope. Feel okay. free to have as many as you want. You do have to fill out a candidate representative form for every candidate representative that you have. Um, so that will need to be on file with me, but there is there is no limit. Uh, Speaker Shapiro. I just have a question. It might be late, later down, and I just forgot the number, but how many demerits do, uh, do candidates get before they're disqualified? Uh, two when you're placed on warning and three and you are out of the, out of the, out of the election. Okay, thank you. Vice President Poole. So it says that um, it's required to attend all events or meetings that candidates are required to attend. Um, my question was this is what if it's an emergency and they have like a legit legitimate reasons why they cannot attend is there maybe a way that that could be included in this because especially now during COVID emergencies could arise. Yeah, um, I'm not sure if later down the line it says I believe that would be in election processes that it says that um, all candidates are required. To attend, I would I would be happy to place that clause when it when it comes up. Beautiful, thank you. Uh, the list is exhausted for this section. Alrighty, Article Four referenda. Um, this just says legislative branch because previously we just had the Senate. That's what both of those are for, and then all these red sections are deadlines for when you have to submit and then withdraw. Was was there any um, comments or changes for Article 4, Section 1? Might be minor, but just because we're in the, uh, the world of remote for the moment, um, for the dates and times, uh, a time zone would probably be uh, a good addition. I know we all assume Eastern Standard Time with Michigan, but just so there's no confusion. Would you like to make your motion um, exclusive to the entire document? So moved. Second. So now we're uh, in discussion on that. Um, if anybody has any discussion points. Not hearing any. 
So yeah, that's a great point, Senator Taylor from Vice President Barada in the chat. Cheers. All right, we'll move into a vote. Consent. 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 Been closed. Okay. That's it. Any opposition? Hearing none, we'll consider that change final. All right. Um, for the sake of time, I will not go through and add EST right now, immediately concluding our discussion and voting of this. I will go on and do that, and then you will get this document for final review to verify that I did that. Um, was was there anything else on this on this section? Nope, we're good to move on. All righty. So section two, ballot access. Um, just added legislative branch and then dates and deadlines. Um, and then, yes, um, I will add EST to those um, later. Was, was there anything um, in regards to ballot access? All right, hearing none. Um, we can move on to section three, which is ballot access through petition, um, just added a deadline, and then the official signature form. Um, it didn't used to say, didn't used to say that, so now it does. <laughs> um, and that's, that's the only changes that I made to that section. Um, so is there any commentary on this section? I don't see any. All right, fantastic. Article five, a hefty article. All righty. <laughs> um, so it didn't used to say executive slate. Um, so now it does. And then um, this just clarifies that every student has the chance to vote for one slate and two senators within their college. Um, I do, I, I would like to, I would like to entertain a motion to change this date. It is incorrect. Um, it should be, um, voting, voting should conclude on Friday, March 26th. Yes. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do that for you. <laughs> Entertain that motion, um, to edit the date to March 26th. Second it. Point of inquiry. Go ahead. Are we, I don't know if this is, uh, wait, hold on. Never mind. I rescind my point of inquiry. Um, Senator Taylor, um, I was just um, entertaining the motion since Vice President Eagle can't necessarily do that. because She's not chairing the meeting. So do you want to, um, so you can say so moved um, or. So moved. Okay, cool. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, is there a second? Second. Has been moved and seconded that we change the date to March 26th. Is there consent? Consent. Consent's been called. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any opposition? Hearing none, seeing none. We'll consider that good. Okay, fantastic. Can't have, an, can't have an election if, if it ends the, the week before it's supposed to start. <laughs> um, okay, so moving on, the other edits that I made to this section um, is that election results will be reviewed at least twice daily. Um, and then executive slate with the majority votes is elected. And then the two legislative candidates receiving the majority of votes will win the election. Um, I updated this date right here and added legislative branch and then um, added that if the successful executive slate chooses not to accept, the next slate with the majority vote wins. Um, so is there is there any commentary on this this section? Vice President Effinger. Hi. Um, so quick question. Would it be perhaps unfair to grant the next person in line the uh, the winning, I guess, position, because all the votes that people would have cast for their preferred candidate who may have won would then be discounted, whereas they could have voted for a second or third candidate had they known originally that they were going to step down? 
Um, and so all those people who voted for the candidate that won and then stepped down would have their votes thrown out and they would have no ability to choose between options two and three. Um, so it sounds like you would like me to, you would like to maybe add a clause that says if there's more than two, more than if there's. It sounds like he's asking for a special election to occur. Yeah, okay. bas basically, I can't propose this, but if a member of the legislature would love to propose an amendment to this, stating if more than two people run, then a special election will be held should one group step down. I think that would be beneficial. Uh, Vice President Poole. Um, point of clarification, like a grammatical thing, I could be wrong, I'm bad at grammar, guys. Um, but for R, when it said when, should it be wins, like plural or no? It should be wins. You're right. It's underlined and everything. <laughs> that makes me happy. I'm sorry, Ruby. Yeah, it should be wins. So if someone would like to make that motion. So moved. Second. Um, so now we're in discussion on making this wins with an S. In the interest of time, I don't think anybody's going to object to good grammar, so I move the previous question. All right, so we would move into voting on whether or not there should be an S there. Consent. Is there a second to consent? Second. We didn't have a second for the question. Second for the question. You proposed the question. Second. No. Thank you. <laughs> no, sorry. We'll do that one more time. It's okay. It's okay, guys. Wrong question. Sorry. We've been killing it on procedure today. So people do great work. All right, so now we're in the vote. Consent can be called. Consent. Is there a second? Second. All right, any opposition? All right, we're good. More grammatically correct, I love that. <laughs> um, was there any more commentary for this section? Just real quick point of information, if there was a senator or representative willing to make a um, proposed amendment on ranked voting or anything of that sort. Uh, Eric, uh, you were not recognized. We have Senator Taylor next in line. Uh, it, it was pretty much the same thing. I, I don't want to, I mean, this is pretty much a big thing and I don't want to try to boil the ocean, you know, at uh, almost six o'clock that said, um, uh, one of the worries with having a special election is turnout. Uh, ranked voting would, one, get rid of the need for a second election, which, as we know, generally has dismal turnout rates. And, yeah, two, I, I think it's a good idea. I guess my question, which, forgive my ignorance, is something this heavy, uh, something we can attach to this bill um, or is this something that perhaps needs to be moved to committee? And I don't know the answer to this, so it's more of an inquiry. What was the inquiry? Uh, there's oh. some... some uh... Go ahead. Regarding the rank voting, is, is this something that could be attached to this document or is this something that requires a little more heavy lifting elsewhere? Uh, like in bylaws, for example. Um, so I'm not positive that the bylaws go in to the procedures that should be followed for elections. Um, it very easily could be something added into subsection B right here. Um, rather than saying each student would be eligible to vote for one executive slate, it could be changed to say they could vote to rank their slates. Um, 
I'm, I'm not sure how the ballot usually goes about getting written. I would have to contact Evan Heiser. Um, I'm, I'm J Jacoby, are you familiar with, with that at all? Yeah, I would, uh, ranking gets a little messy, especially on experience uh, WMU. Uh, I would, I would uh, entertain something like, um, um, rank to, uh, if we could explore the idea of ranked voting um, if not, uh, we would hold a special ele election. I think that's the verbiage that should probably be included. Um, I don't have anybody else on the list. Um, does anybody want to uh, move that or? Motion to do that. So moved. Um, was there a second? Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded that we change the verbiage um, to let me let me work work it out for you. Thank you. <laughs> I think you should add a sub point actually. Uh, at would, B. Yeah. And I would say in the event students will we will explore or we will explore the opportunity for ranked voting comma if possible this is how voting will be conducted period if not comma a special election will be uh, held to determine uh, the elected slate um, if um, if the if the slate that wins resigns if the original winning slate resigns okay can I reference can I reference um, this sub point? You can, yeah, you can do that, or you can just drop it down there as a set point. Whatever. I, I like that option. I do too. And then we need another comma after possible. All right. Point of information to make this uh, official so that it is actually discussed. Do we need to refer this item uh, to committee? just so it's uh, on paper for being discussed later? Uh, I don't believe so. Thank goodness, thank you. If possible, this is how voting will be conducted. If not, a special election will be held to determine the elected slate if the original winning slate resigns. Okay. All right, we're now in discussion on the proposed amendment that is getting highlighted. Um, so I I'm assuming that Speaker Shapiro, you're wanting to be on the amendment list, is that correct? My thing was fixed. It was turning we to the EBC, so we're good. Okay. Um, Got you. Vice President Morris. Um, maybe we could establish a deadline for when we'll know so the candidates have an idea how they'll need it to run their campaign, if it's going to be on a ranked or if it's going to be in traditional. Yeah, I would entertain um, a uh, <laughs> motion to uh, amend my amendment to... Um, to say, uh, do you think two weeks is enough time? Um, oh, I was going to email Evan Heiser at the passing of this um, to I'll let say, him know that. I think, I think two weeks is probably good because we don't know what his schedule is like. Um, so I would uh, entertain that if somebody wants to uh, move that. I would like to make a motion to change to two weeks. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded to change the amended. I make a point of information. Good. Um, you put 2020, so oh. you have to vote 2021. <laughs> You're doing great, <laughs> Ruby. <laughs> 
All right. Um, it's been seconded. Um, no <laughs> discussion on the amendment to the amendment. Uh, does anybody have anything for that? Representative Garrington, is that for the amendment on the amendment? Uh, it's about the section A. Is that, is that what we're talking about right now? Is it about the two weeks that we're just no, added no, in? Not about the two weeks. All right. So I don't see any discussion points. I don't hear any discussion points. We'll move into voting on adding. Consent. We'll move into okay. voting to add. Uh, oh, you can't call consent. <laughs> Can a senator or a rep call consent? Consent. 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 Thank you. Is there a second? Second. second. There we go. Any opposition? All right, cool. Representative Garrison. Yeah, so um, I just had a quick question. Are we talking about ranked voting for the uh, the full process? Or are we talking about if the um, if the executive slate that one chose to not accept, then the ranked voting system would uh, favor the next person? Is that what we're trying to do? Um, I guess I'm a little confused on that. Yeah, that's a good question. It's pretty vague right now. I, I mean, I think it could be applied for senators and the executive slate, but that's the distinction that you guys have to make. Vice President Poole. Just for the sake of consistency, as well as um, for those people who may not be good with numbers, um, I think the 127 2021 should actually be spelled out because above we did not do number four. So January 27th of 2021. Correct. Just for consistency as well. So that'd be correct. Does anyone want to make uh, that? Does I'll make a motion yeah. for that to happen. Is there a second? Second. All right. A discussion on the, <laughs> the date change. Is there a discussion on the date change? Hearing none, seeing none. We'll move into a vote. Consent. Second. 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 Any opposition? Hearing none. It's approved. Keep it going. Back to discussion back into, on sub point A. Yeah, back into su discussion on sub point A. Hearing none, seeing none, we'll move into a vote then on sub point A, but there's no specifics. Does somebody want to add specifics? Does it apply to everybody? Um, I'd like to make a motion to add some specifics to uh, the voting, <laughs> rank voting. All right, what are, what's your specifics? Um, I believe, or I think that ranked voting should occur if there is, like, if the um, executive slate decides not to accept, then ranked voting will uh, occur. So you want to make it just for the executive slate, not for Senate? Uh, no, if also for the, the Senate. So, like, if they choose not to accept, then it goes to ranked voting system. Okay, so we would have to make the system change before that. So after ranked voting, um, I, you should probably, maybe it'd be smart to entertain um, something like um, for both Senate and executive slate elections or executive slate and Senate elections. Does that sound right? You yeah. want me to move? Yep. Oh. All right. Um, so I, I'll entertain that. Is there anybody that wants to move that? Anybody that wants to make that motion? Can I make that motion? You can. Uh, I'll make a motion to do that. Okay. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. All right, great. We're in discussion on that amendment. Ruby, can you type it out? So after what am rank, I typing out? <laughs> after ranked voting, just put for the executive slate and senator elections. Any discussion on the amendment to the amendment? I'm gonna be saying amendment all night. Uh, <laughs> all right, hearing none, saying none. We'll move into a vote. This is on amending the amendment. Is there consent? Consent. 
Is there second? second? Opposition. Hearing on seeing none. Back into discussion on the amendment. Seeing no more discussion on the amendment, we'll move into voting on the amendment as a whole. Consent. Consent's been called. Second. All right, it's been seconded as well. Is there any opposition? Hearing none. That is good to go. Yay. It's been a long time. All right. Yay. I don't have anybody on the original speakers list, so we are good to move on to Article 6. Fantastic. Election promotions. The only edit to this section is executive candidates. Um, that being executive slates, i.e. president, vice president, candidates. Any commentary? All righty. Seeing none, hearing none. Section 2. Um, Charles, this is where you would want to, actually Charles, moving back to section one, you had you had mentioned you wanted to make it not be requ required in the case of emergency? Correct. Alrighty. I can't make a motion. Oh, someone else would have to motion that. I'll make a motion for whatever Charles said. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> Okay. Can you, uh, can, sorry, was that a second? There, there was a second. Yep. Okay. Uh, Charles, can you uh, verbalize that? Give me a second. Some, I think something along the lines of Ruby, you can fix the wording. Um, but ex except um, cases in emergency, something like that, I guess. Fix the wording, I'm terrible at that, I'm sorry. Upon notice of the EPC? Yes. All right, how does that look? For me, that sounds great. Thank you, Ruby. Yes. All right, we're in discussion on the amendment. Seeing none, hearing none, we'll move into voting on the amendment. Consent. Consent's been called, is there a second? Second. Any opposition? Hearing on. Good to go. Section two. Fantastic. Section two. There will be two executive debates with at least one occurring before March 1st. Um, there will be at least one legislative debate preceding the close of the election. Um, all legislative candidates shall be required to participate. Charles, would you like a subsection in regards to emergencies? Yes, please. Would someone uh, like point of information? Does the previous one cover it? That one just covered executive candidates. Oh, gotcha. I can't uh, make a motion, so I, someone I make a like motion make for motion. Charles's point. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Second. Thank you. We're in discussion on the amendment. Hearing none, seeing none. We'll move into a vote on the amendment. Done. Done. Second. All right, let's do that again since she's done typing now. <laughs> Do we have consent? Consent. Second. Thank you. Any opposition? All 
All right, good. Yay. Guys, we are powering through this and I love it. Um, is there any other commentary for section two? Nope. Fantastic. Section three, voter's guide. Um, okay, sorry, I was confused. Okay, um, so there's a deadline. Um, there's information for the voter's guide. And then um, demerits will be published in the, in the voter's guide, more deadlines. And then um, this clause was added just because demerits can happen up until they can be submitted up until uh, so many days after the conclusion of voting. Um, so this was added so that um, in the event a demerit was submitted within the time of voting, um, that would be added to the voter's guide. So is there any commentary on section three? Uh, Vice President Morris. Do we have a like timeline or threshold for when the voter's guide will be updated, such as on the website, the social media, et cetera, for demerits and so forth? Um, on section C, it said, do you wanted a timeline? Yeah, um, say like within 72 hours or something. Okay. So a motion would have to be made for a timeline to be added. Motion to add a time. Is there a second? Second. We moved and seconded that we had a timeline. We're now in discussion on adding a timeline. Uh, is there any discussion? Uh, Vice President Effinger, is that for the discussion? Negative. Okay, uh, Vice President Poole. Um, as the current VP for information technology, I'm in full support of this. Um, I think that's a great idea. Um, also, I was wondering, um, is there something in the current constitution or bylaws with this information already? Because I think there may be, but I could be mistaken. Uh, Vice President Eagle? Um, there is not. Thank you. All right, um, so we are still on discussion not for- any, any more discussion points, so we'll move into a vote. Alexis, did you have, did you give a timeline? I threw one out there. I thought we were gonna try and come up with it as a team. I think she just second or moved whatever you said. So go ahead and make the timeline so we can vote. Uh, okay, one second, uh, Charles, what would be an adequate timeline for you? For me personally, um, 72 hours, I think is reasonable. Okay, is that also reasonable for you, Mason? I agree, yeah. Okay, yeah, then my proposal is 72 hours. All right, we'll move into voting. We consent. Sounds been called. Is there a second? Second. All right, any opposition? Hearing none. That's approved. All right. Any other commentary for section three? Yeah, we got Vice President Eifinger. Uh, just wondering if we could also perhaps send the voter's guide out via the legacy um, to all the students so that we, everyone will have a copy of it instead of those who just pay attention to our social media and website. Uh, I'm I was not wondering sure. if that's a possibility. I'm not proposing or saying someone should propose that, but I'm just wondering if it's a possibility. <clears throat> Um, I don't know if it's a possibility, so let's not include it in the governing document, but we can have conversations to try to, to try to make that happen. 
Um, yeah, and the the election link, um, that stuff will be included in the legacy. So the information to get to like all of that stuff will be in the legacy. But okay, any anything else? Nope. Oh, Coolio. Uh, that wasn't cool. Sorry. Oh. Um, Charles, do you have something? I do, if you don't mind. Um, in addition, for the sake of WSA, keeping track of our documents and transparency and stuff like that, besides uh, social media and the website, we also have a WSA archives I started last year. Um, it should also be put in there. So that way we have it forever and it does not get lost. Yep. So section D covers that. It says this does not limit the other locations that the voter's guide may be released as long as it is done so on or after March 15th. So that covers that. Beautiful. Was that the last person on the speaker's list? For section three, yes. We have one for section four. Fantastic. Ed, section four? Go ahead. Uh, Ed County. The where County of well, Kalamazoo? So city, Kalamazoo, state, federal laws, county should be there as well. Okay. Before or after? I'm not sure it matters. Ah. All righty. Did you make a motion for that, Senator Taylor? A motion to amend section four to add county. Is there a second? Second. All right, uh, now we're in discussion on adding county. Uh, is there any discussion? Hearing none, seeing none, we'll move to a vote. Is it consent? Consent. consent. Second. Opposition? All right, hearing none, seeing none, uh, good to go. All right, so article seven um, had to add governing documents in here. Um, we added that um, any candidates or student agents of referenda are also subject to a demerit. Um, and then again, if they, if they, are in violation um, subject to a demerit at the discretion of the EPC. Um, and that's that's what all of those are. Um, we did add, um, they are prohibited of um, events of a biased nature during election week. Um, I absolutely believe that if candidates want to promote the elections during election week, they absolutely can, as long as they are not promoting themselves or other candidates. Um, and then that that's just what this sub sub point says right here is that they'll be allowed nonpartisan to encourage voter turnout. Um, that just says uh, violations are at the discretion of the EPC and then chair or co chairs because there's two of us. Alrighty, and that that concludes um, section one is is there commentary. I don't see any. Fantastic. Alrighty, section two, campaign expenditures. Um, this should be read, that's a deadline, my, my apologies. Um, and then this just says, at the discretion of the EPC. Uh, any commentary? Don't see anything. All right, fantastic. Endorsements. Um, this, this, this says that um, individuals in RSOs, they may invite candidates to campaign before an endorsement is offered, um, but no candidates or referendum may request an audience, and they can also not request an endorsement. It has to be offered. Um, and then this just says demerits at the discretion of the EPC. Is there any commentary? Yeah, I have one. Um, I noticed mm -hmm. that that's a, that's a change. Um, to, and before it was that you couldn't 
request to um, get an RSO's endorsement, but you could request to go to their meeting. And also there was no um, stipulation on requesting individual endorsements. So I guess the question is why are we adding that? Um, yeah, uh, I don't, I think, I think it should be if someone wants you to campaign, you should, because at an RSO, um, there's, there's many other people there that maybe don't want their time to be taken by you campaigning. Um, so as if an RSO were to extend an invitation to you, that would be under, um, the, the whole RSO would have discussed it before an invitation was given. Um, so that was, that was just my, my concept of that is that maybe some people don't want to see certain people campaign. Um, but we, we could, we could certainly remove that. Um, speaker Shapiro. And, uh, well, I think, um, I think if the candidates ask, the RSO can certainly decline the RSO doesn't have to entertain, um, you know, any candidate asking for an endorsement. Um, I would, I would keep this line only if it included at the end in exchange for anything monetary or something like that. I think it's okay if candidates ask for, uh, uh, for an endorsement. Like I said before, the RSO doesn't have to entertain anything like that. Um, so I make a motion to add at the end of that in exchange for monetary or compensate compens comp whatever compensor compensatorial value whatever that word is pardon me <laughs> pro quo but yeah thank you in exchange uh, for what uh something of monetary value any anything of monetary value yeah that's better than something thank you would point of point of information. Is there a specific reason why you chose monetary value instead of perhaps any other exchange or transaction that could occur? Uh, no, it's just the only one that came to head. Any, any exchange really, um, in exchange for any uh, good or service or something, how, how would we word this? Quid um, pro quo, I think is the only way yeah. to put that. Yeah, quid there. pro quo arrangement or agreement. So, so like, for an audience in exchange for a quid pro quo agreement. All right. uh, is there a second? Second. Ours has been moved and seconded that we uh, discuss this. We're in discussion on the amendment to add in exchange for quid pro quo agreement. Is there discussion? Hearing none and seeing none. We'll move into a vote. Second. Second. Is there any opposition? Point of order, are we allowed to use consent if this deals with monetary values? Uh, endorsements, it's, it's stipulating you can't use, do it for any, in, in any type of exchange. So I would say no. Um, so the consent and the second stands, is there any opposition? Hearing on, seeing none. Good to go. All right. Was there anyone else on the speakers list for section three? Um, there was uh, Vice President Morris. Yeah, I guess now that we've kind of passed that, that was going to address what I was going to say too, but so we're all on the same page. It now says that individuals and RSOs can in open invite, but so can candidates invite themselves to RSO meetings. So uh, along the lines that they're approved, right? Yes. Thank you. All right, fantastic. I can move on to section four. All right, um, this just covers, um, I added at the discretion of the EPC and I also added um, demerits will be published on all other social media platforms that would include the archives. Is there any commentary on this? All right, sounds like there is not. Um, so moving on to definitions, uh, I just added executive slate, legislative candidate, and all of those. Is there any commentary on those? Mm 
I love this now. Oh my gosh, guys, I don't think this has ever happened. We've gone through the entire election code in one meeting, which means we can move on to discussion of the document as a whole. Uh, at this time, um, I would like to entertain a motion to exhaust this topic um, and before adjourning our meeting. Um, motion to exhaust the topic before adjourning the meeting. Second. Second. Okay, is there any opposition? All right, cool. Discussion on the uh, entire document as a whole. Are there any points? Um, I appreciate everybody making feedback along the way. Um, yeah, that was very impressive. I'm, I'm very surprised. Not seeing anything in the chat. Not for real? All right. Uh, seeing none, hearing none, we'll put this to a vote. It does have to deal with, um, well, it doesn't have to deal with our money. It deals with, it deals with. It doesn't like, have to deal with our money, so consent could be called, but I'm going to request a tallied vote. Canada to snake, abstains. Mr. Chair, how long would you like voting to proceed? Uh, I'll watch it and I'll end it. Thank you. I'll give uh, 15 more seconds. We'll end it at 1.15. All right, congratulations. Document passed by a vote of 35 to zero to zero. Um, and look at that. We only met, went two minutes over. Thank you, everybody, for your um, participation um, in today's conversation and, and we're working on this document. Um, it's, a, it's now election season, which is kind of sad because it's time for me to go bye bye. <laughs> um, but I'll just uh, throw out one more reminder um, about um, the meeting that's happening directly after this. If anybody wants to stay and talk about that document that was sent out earlier. Uh, and also, please uh, fill out those forms that I sent out on that email if you guys are interested in those opportunities. Thank you all for your hard work. Have a wonderful rest of your week, and I'll see you next Wednesday.